Hi, I'm just going to talk through a brief example of um, the way trust can be developed and be lost when using a website. Um, trust is a, is a difficult thing, but very, very important, particularly if you're doing a social network, and this is going to be a social network example, but also for e-commerce and pretty much every aspect of the web. Um, trust isn't something that's just constant, but changes through time. So if you can imagine you've got uh, high confidence, you could have on a, on a website or high trust or low confidence. Um, this might, might vary through time. You know, it might start off really, really high and you're really pleased. To, and then lots of nasty things happen, things go wrong, and your trust gradually ebbs and goes away. Alternatively, you might start with very low belief in the site, but things, you know, work well and gets better and better and better and better. Oops, but then perhaps there's some great disaster, it loses all your data and it goes again. So trust is easy, it's hard to, to, to gain, but very easy to lose. So let's, we're going to look at a, a few examples, of, but well, actually, no, just one, one crucial example that I've had recently. Um, there's been a whole rash of sites that have been developed for social networking for academics. And um, one of them that just came to mind recently was one called ResearchGate. And that ha what happened is I keep getting emails from ResearchGate saying, hey, lots of your friends are using ResearchGate, join. Well, there's lots of sites like that. Um, but I had a peek at research sites. So a couple of things happened. One was lots of friends I got these mails from. Um, the other then I had a, a peek at the, the website. And look, at the, it actually looks very nice. Um, it's clean, it's well designed. There's a little infographic that I can sort of peek around and seeing, oh, you know, there's loads of people using this in biology. There's a few computer scientists. This is starting to build, build my belief. So that's a quick look at what's been happening so far. So, yeah, I've started, I've talked about these things. I started with quite good, good confidence because I was getting emails from lots of people I knew. I then look at the site and, hmm, it's looking very nice. It's got good things on it. Um, in terms of these sort of, we could think of some factors that build trust. So the first one was people. You know, this was from people I trusted. I was seeing emails saying, this is good. I mean, I knew they were automatically generated emails. I know all sorts of things like that. But still, it's given me a little bit of confidence. I then went to the website and the website looked well, well designed, well good. So there's good user experience on the website. I'm, I'm feeling good about it. So far, so good. So I go back to him e email, I click the join now. And again, the experience is reasonably good. It, it filled in um, my name, um, presumably from details that friends had, and my email. I've changed my email here because um, I want to do a fresh login. Um, again, lots of nice things. So if my password wasn't good enough, um, it keeps telling me I need at least six letters. I type the password. Um, it could be more secure, so I've put in some numbers, uh, perhaps a punctuation, and it's telling me things. This is good. This is good so far. Um, and then I go to say I want to make my account. So, aha, now this is, this is better this time. The first time I did this, I don't know if you noticed, it went blank for a while. It stayed blank. Now, this time it's actually filled in some... So we'll come to that back to this screen in a moment. So again, if I go back to the, um, the image of what's been going on, um, my confidence stayed high because the user experience I was getting was high. Now, in fact, when I first used this site, that box that had some publications in stayed empty for a while. So I sort of lost a little bit of confidence. This time it was there. If Presumably that was just a delay on the line, various things happening there. So it's, it's interesting from a design point of view, you don't have complete control over, over the world. Things can go wrong, you have to be aware of that. However, what I then did when I first used this site was I didn't fill in any of these publications at this point. I said, we'll continue, and I clicked the continue button. So it said, skip this step, we'll continue. I clicked the continue button. And what I saw was this. Now, that's a bit of JSON, for those who recognise it. It's an internal message that should have gone to the web page. For some reason, I don't know what went wrong, perhaps because I'd not selected, perhaps it was a timing issue because um, it was uh, still looking for, for data from the back end. But whatever went wrong, this gobbledygook, which should have gone to some internal bit, ended up on my screen. Well, you can imagine, at this point, things are not looking so good. So I had a bit of a usability problem, first of all. So going back to these factors, um, 
because of delays, which is which happens on the web, um, things didn't, the first time I, I used it, didn't look so good. So I started to lose confidence. And then, and then I get all that JSON code. And my confidence plummets through the floor. Right? Um, what was going wrong there? This was an engineering issue. The reliability of the website was low. So we're used to thinking a lot about usability and user experience. If the engineering is not up to things, if things go wrong, if your data gets lost, if things crash, if you get silly answers, your confidence and your trust falls through the floor. Now, in fact, things didn't stay there because when I went back to my email later, there was a mail saying that I'd been registered and can I confirm my, my email and stuff. And OK, I thought I'll give this another try. I'll give this one last try. Well, perhaps not one last try, but I was going to give it another try. I clicked through and it worked this time. Things worked smoothly. I got to a page asking me to confirm my publications. So actually, I've just skipped back to my... I said, the fact that the email actually arrived, you know, gave me a little bit of belief in the stuff, but not a lot, you know. It's just an email, but a little bit. I'm on the upward track very slightly, but I'm still feeling pretty worried about this site. Now I get this page, which asks me to confirm various um, publications. It was actually, this is embedded in the page, and I clicked it to, to pop it up. And it's, this is quite good in a way. It knows about publications I'm involved with because um, I've already, other people, other people I've published with have obviously joined this site, entered publications, and there's a little click box that you can get. You can't see it here that says, do you want to let your colleagues know about this service? So I guess the idea is if I entered a publication, I'd enter my co-authors, and then it would say, would oh, you want to let them know about it as well, which was how I got emails in the first place. So it's saying, you know, this, so this is nice. All I have to do is agree to some publications and they can appear on a profile. Wow, really easy this. Apart from I click yes and look what it says. This item is part of a set of 18 publications. We will add them all to your profile. Undo. It doesn't say, would you like me to add 18 more publications to your profile? It's part of a set of 18. Well, what 18? My 18? Uh, is it that this publication occurs 18 times? Is it that it's going to add all the publications from one of my colleagues that they entered? I don't know. Can you guess what I did? I hit undo. Uh, I tried the same thing with another. I got the same kind of answers. Um, I have not done any more. I have not added any new publications. I have not confirmed them. Because I don't know what this is going to do. Now, Len, let's go back to this graph. What's happening is here is I've got an issue of transparency. Um, I don't know. It's not telling me. It could do. It could say, for instance, um, a tell me more button and explain what's going to happen. Once I've been using the site, I will know what's happening. But at this point, right, if I was really pleased with the site and it said something like this, I'd think, oh, yes, well, you know, it's a good site. I believe in it. It's going to say, do something sensible. Um, as it is, my interpretation of what I see depends on where I am. If I was up in the positive end of the spectrum, I might think quite reasonably about it. Because I'm already negative, if I see something that's ambiguous, I will treat it as if it's bad. So I said, if I was up here already, then possibly I would, I would be happy with it. I would stay up there. Oops, that's the wrong bit. Um, ah, go away. Um, so get the right, the right drawing gives. So if I was up here, I might stay up here. But I'm not up there. I'm not up. I'm down here. Um, and so what happens? I'll just draw it in red. I don't know how to interpret this. And if anything, I might interpret it negatively because... I'm already down that side. Now, a very crucial thing about these dynamics is when you're faced with something you don't understand, you don't know about, if you're feeling positive, if you're feeling confident, then it doesn't matter too much. If you're feeling slightly negative, then you'll interpret negatively. And then transparency becomes very important. Earlier on, there were things that gave me some of those beliefs. At this point, there wasn't. And I said, I've not got any further. It may be that in the future, I'll get more of these requests from other people. I'll begin to believe in the site and my confidence might 
gradually, gradually start to eat back in. It may be I've stopped and I'll never use this site again and they've lost me. Trust is easy to gain, but very easy to lose. And once you've lost it, you never get it back.